Page views allow you to create scrollable and snappable layouts. So when you drag it in, this is what it looks like, where you've got the top level page view element. And when you select that, that's where you'll see the properties of the page view on the right here. And then inside, you've got all the different page views. So if we just collapse these right here, it comes in by default with three page views. And when you select them, it'll cycle between these different page views. Now, by default, Flutterflow just adds in an image here. But of course, you can add anything in here, but it has the same rule as the root widget. That is, there can only be one widget. So if you want multiple things, you have to wrap it in something else. So if I got my image here and I wrap it in a column, then I can put a bunch of things in here. Now, if you want to add pages, then you want to go to your page view right here and come up to this active page, which you can select your active page like that, or add a new page. So now I've got another one here that's been added in. And to delete pages, you can just come over to that page and delete it. Okay, let's just put some containers in here so we can see some of how the properties of this widget work. So I'm just going to dump a container in here. And let's make these three different colors here. Okay, so let's come to our root page widget right here. And of course you have the normal properties of conditional visibility, responsiveness, and padding and alignment. So let's just close those up for now and come down to the properties specific to the page view. And there's two categories. We've got the page view properties and the indicator properties. The indicator is these things down here to indicate which page you're currently on. So this is the first one, right? now and if you go to your second page you can see that it expands to show you that you're on that second page now let's just turn these off for now and we'll look at those in a minute okay let's look at our main page view properties now the first two are obvious you've got your width and your height so here are the defaults that come in let's just give it a hundred percent height and you can see we've got this little space at the bottom which is coming from this margin right here which is just the default to make a space for those indicator properties but we can reset that all right next property is your axis and of course it can be horizontal or vertical so here's horizontal and here's vertical Next, we've got allow for swipe scrolling. That is like on a phone, do you want to allow users to get to the next page view, say from the first to the second, by swiping or not? Now, you might be thinking like, well, of course I do. Why wouldn't I want my user to be able to do that? Well, there are some use cases where you don't want this possible. For instance, maybe you're using this in a form context. So on each page view, you have something you want the user to fill out and you don't want to give them control to just swipe wipe through the whole form. So typically you would turn this off if you want the user to accomplish some action before you advance to the next page. Okay, you might be wondering, but then how do you advance to the next screen? Well, we'll look in this in a second, but page views can be controlled through the action flow editor. So if you search for control page view, you've got this option right here, and we'll go into depth in this in a second, but you would control the logic to move to next page through your action flow editor. Okay. So let's come back here. And another reason why you might want to restrict swipe scrolling is if you're doing some backend work, like updating a user account or adding a post in a database. So you don't want to give the user the ability to just quickly swipe through and make a bunch of calls to your backend or an API. And that's actually connected to this next property right here, update page on swipe. Now, what is this? So if this is on, every time the user swipes to a new page, the page will be updated. Well, why would you need to update a page? Well, you want to update a page if you have any type of dynamic data. So typically that would be if you're doing any state management stuff with like page variables, component variables, or app state variables, things like when you click in here and these local page state variables, or over here, you've got your app state variables or variables in components. Or if you're doing something with a back end, so your database or an API call. And let me give you a few examples. So here's the first example of when to use update page on swipe. So I've got two pages on this first page. I've got a first name text field and then a next that will advance the user to the next page. And you just got the next part in the form, which is an email address 
address, but I've got this text right here, and I want this to say, hi, whomever it is who filled this out on this first page. So how would I do that? Well, I want to set this text up here to the value in this text field. So I'll set it to that widget state. So here's how I do this. I can go into this text field right here, and it's a dynamic value, and we want two values. We want that like hi part, and then the name that they filled out. So we're going to want to combine a text. It's just a little helper function here. And so this first one will be hi comma space and the next one will be that widget state so that's right here and if we twirl this open and when you highlight it you see that it highlights the one on the canvas so we know that's correct okay great confirm all right next let's just put that action on this first page next button to advance to the next screen and you do that in the action flow editor let's add an action it's under control page view and if you've got more than one page views here you can select that but we've only only got one and the action is just next that'll advance you to the next page view okay that's it so let's go test this out okay so let's put in my first name John and next and nothing and that's because when we swiped now we accomplished that swipe through that action it's the same thing we didn't update the page so that widget state does say John but this widget this text widget right here has not been updated so let's go click that on and then try it again okay come back to our page view and then just update page on swipe and then let's refresh this okay so John and advance and there you go beautiful the same logic would apply if you make a change to your back end and want to reflect that change on a subsequent page view you want to make sure you update it on swipe okay let's look at a few more properties so down here we have margin and this is just going to push off your page view from the edges so if I were to add an 24 pixels here you can see that it pushes off and this is what that looks like all right so here it is and when i scroll you can see how that layout looks next you've got the initial page index that is when the page loads what page do you want first visible so by default it's set to zero because it is zero indexed so the first page is zero not one and if you wanted the next page to be the one that's visible when the user gets here then you would say one now why would you use this well there are many use cases so maybe you've got a bunch of pictures on one page and then the user clicks on it and that picture is inside a gallery a carousel of pictures and so you want to navigate to that specific picture or maybe you're using the page view in a form application and you already have some of the user's data like their first name and last name so you just want to skip to the information that you need or maybe you're updating so maybe their email address okay next you've got all of your indicator properties down here and this gives you a huge array of options for styling these so the first one is where you want it located on your page and so you can put it anywhere this functions just like your alignment on any other widget you can give it padding so here we have 16 on the left and right so it's pushing up from the bottom and left you have your active and inactive colors so your active color is whatever page you're on and your inactive is all your other colors you've got your dot width so if we double this up it's gonna look like that now that looks like the height except for that we're on vertical so if we change this to horizontal it references the horizontal dimensions and you have the option to control dot height so you can make it really fat or square wash it down to a line. The expansion factor is for the selected page, how much does it get bigger? So here we have three times. So if you just wanted it doubled, you could say two times. Here's the spacing between them. So that's eight pixels and that's 16 pixels and the border radius. So now it has 16, which is more than the width. So it's completely curved and you can get rid of it to make them square. And finally, you've got an outline option that looks like that. All right, next, I wanna show you the actions you have available on this widget. And you have two main categories. You have the trigger, which is when the user swipes. So if you come over to the action flow editor and add an action, you can see that the type of action is on page swipe. So that's the trigger. So when the user swipes, you can define what actions you want to happen. So maybe you want to write to a database or run a function or do some animation in the UI. That's the first thing. And let me show you one argument you have available to you one piece of data so let's just come into state management and come in here and I'm just doing that so we can see 
this value right here. So in here under widget state, if we twirl this open, we can see we've got this page view current index. So when you're defining actions, just know that you have the index of the current page available to you. So you could set up some sort of logic that says, if it's the second page, then do this. If it's the first page, then do this. Okay, so that's the on page swipe trigger. That's for responding to user actions. But you can also control the page view. And we've already seen this. So let's go to this container right here and go to our action flow editor and search for control. And we've got that control page view. Let's select this page. And you've got these options. So you can go to the next page view, the previous one, first, last, or jump to an index. And once again, this is zero index. So your first is number zero. So you could do some Something like when the user clicks a certain action, you go to a certain page view. And finally, what are page views typically used for? Well, the most common use cases are onboarding screens where you'll have some introductory information about your app and how to use it. They're also used for photo galleries like carousels and form flows. Using them for forms is great because it allows you to split up the form data into multiple screens and lowers the cognitive load on on your users. So they only have to fill out one thing at a time as opposed to seeing a screen with 20 inputs. And that's the page view in Flutterflow.